later. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for another episode of the Amicable Divorce Network podcast. I am your host, Tracy Ann Moore Grant, the founder of the Amicable Divorce Network. And we are here to discuss all issues about divorce, anything that happens before, during, and after divorce, and put an amicable spin on it. How can issues be resolved outside of the court system? And so today I am joined by one of our amazing members, Pamela Trainer. Um, Pamela is a life coach and divorce coach, and she helps people through the divorce process. A lot of people have not heard of what a divorce coach is or a life coach, and they are very confused about this. I get questions about this all of the time. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. I'm losing my voice all the time. And so Pamela is going to shed some light for us today on this role. Thank you very much for being here today, Pamela. Hi, Tracy. I'm happy to have been asked and I'm happy to be here and hopefully give some really great information to people out there that are not accustomed to hearing these terms, life and divorce coach. Yeah. A lot of times people are like, are you cheering on the divorce process? You know, like what is <laughs> happening here? Um, but it really is like a divorce guide, I think. Yeah. You know, a, a coach directs, a coach doesn't play in the game. And so I think that's a really good um, way to look at it. So for our audience members out there who have never heard of a divorce coach um, or a life coach, how would you explain what it is that you do? Well, um, as a life and divorce coach, they kind of do go together because divorce happens in so many people's lives. Um, what I do is help an individual, women and men, when they are overwhelmed in anything that's going on, especially divorce, because that's very stressful. Um, I help them to find a way to begin a process that is scary, overwhelming, uh, and frustrating for a lot of people. As a divorce coach, um, I am goal-oriented. Goal I look for um, different things that I can work with, systems, strategies, exercises, role play, anything that's going to help somebody uh, work through an issue. And as a divorce coach, I do not advise. I am not an advisor, um, especially as a divorce coach. I am part of the team that will help somebody through that whole process. And as you said before, during and after. And everything that I hope passes to my clients, it has to do with um, support, motivation, and making the best possible choices so that they can create a plan, follow a decision, to fruition that will help them in their future needs, wants, interests, all of that. Now, that definition of divorce coaching uh, is, I'm paraphrasing the definition from the American Bar Association. Mm -hmm. And it is concise and it is not a long, lengthy definition, but it is a lot of what I do. So I help people that are unhappy in their marriage. Um, some people have just grown apart. Some people, it's a different kind of situation. I have helped people who have had um, different kinds of abuse and they were afraid to begin the process. Um, I have helped people that just aren't sure what to do. They don't know how to take the steps. Maybe nobody in their family has been divorced. Mm -hmm. um, so let me jump in divorced. with a quick question. Sure. As you're describing all of this, um, how does the role of a coach differ from that of a mental health professional? Okay. <laughs> um, so as a mental health professional, helping somebody going through this process, they work a lot on what has happened in the past. Abuses definitely need to be seen uh, by a therapist and a divorce coach for different reasons. So a divorce coach 
um, is there to help you work through and be present and do what you need to do to move forward. A therapist delves into and helps you dig through uh, maybe past things that have happened that you're still stuck in, that you're having a hard time getting past so that you can in divorce move forward or in your life. Yeah. Um, that's, that's the difference. They kind of work through you through the past with you to present day. And I take it from what's happening right now, put a focus on the future and help create a plan. Mm -hmm. So I think a good example, and please tell me if I'm wrong, is when people are approaching a divorce, um, a mental health professional would not really weigh their different options in regards to what type of divorce to get, for example, right. does this look like an uncontested divorce, an amicable divorce, or a contested divorce? Um, they they really aren't going to weigh in on that or touch that. Whereas you can sit with somebody and say, look at the different processes that you can choose for your divorce. Here's the different ones. Which one do you think that you need? And now let's make the step to um, do something about it. Here's who we're going to contact. You know, it's, it's more of exactly. a, yeah. Whereas they are really trying a mental health professional being they, they're really trying to help people emotionally deal with mm -hmm. trauma, you know, the different things like that. You are there actually helping with the actionable steps. Exactly. Um, yeah. One of the things um, I know that you noted that you do is help people get organized. Um, yeah. And so often that could be very overwhelming. And so um, explain what you might do to help somebody um, get organized and stay organized. Uh, I think the first part of an organizational process would be um, me hearing their story, knowing what they are able to accomplish on their own and where they need my help specifically. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people come to me in the organizational level and it's not just about putting paperwork together, although that is a big, that is a big thing. People yeah. uh, procrastinate on that because they're afraid. They're like, oh my Tell gosh, about it's it. getting too close to the, <laughs> it's getting close to the truth. Oh no, like yeah. I have to do this. Yeah. So I'm there to hold their hand through that. I don't do the work for them. Mm -hmm. I guide them through the process and help it become an easier task. Um, resourcing <clears throat> is a very big deal. There are a lot of people who will say, oh, I don't know like what I, what kind of divorce I want. So you're yeah. right. I explain the different types and ask them, where do you think you fit in? What feels like um, the best choice for you and your partner? That's the first part. Resourcing um, lawyers, uh, certified financial planners, accountants, realtors, uh, mortgage, all, everything that comes into the idea of a divorce team is who I help source for them. So I may have a list of five lawyers and then I help them find the courage to make that first call yeah. and ask about a consultation or a whatever their, whatever their needs are to be met. Yeah. So organization starts with sourcing and, um, it's not ethical for me to say, well, I know this person, mm -hmm. or this is who I used in my divorce. That's not okay to do. This is their decision. So I come to them with all kinds of sources for everything that they might need. Yeah. Um, so that's pretty important. Next is, uh, once they speak to an attorney, uh, you know, and have kind of a, uh, beginning of a relationship, uh, an understanding with that person, and they choose that lawyer or firm, then they know that they will be asked to turn over information, paperwork, financials, um, everything, you know, budgeting, expenses, mm -hmm. yeah. what, what they have to look forward to in divorce. Mm -hmm. So that is very, very, very overwhelming. And I think you a touched times, on an interesting point, and that is the team approach. Yeah. And so I think a lot of people approach their divorce thinking, well, I'm just going to get an attorney. And like where you're yeah. talking about organizing the information, that would be a paralegal. And those are yeah. quite often the most expensive people that you can have doing that work. 
And so to really have somebody who's like your personal concierge to help you can really focus people on, let's get this information, let's get it organized. And as an attorney myself, when something comes to me and it is completely organized, we use detour life (laughs) for that. Um, But otherwise, when people are very clear, here's my budget, here's the information, and that saves a ton of money. My staff is not creating this. My staff isn't chasing it down. And so that is a very efficient and focused way to go about getting the information that every professional needs um, for it. Exactly. Everybody needs the same stuff. I mean, that's just the reality of things. Um, Right. I think another part of the team that you touched on that I think people need to understand is who helps people before, during, and after divorce. And so sometimes as an attorney, I have a consult with somebody who's getting ready to get ready. But for the most part, I'm not involved prior to the divorce. I am involved as an attorney during the divorce or Mm -hmm. as a mediator. And it would be unusual for me to have anything to do after the divorce, but there are very many things in reality that need to be done. And so Mm -hmm. the coach is a team member who is actually there through all three stages. Right. We get to know our client extremely well, their family situation, uh, their wants and desires for their family, for their children. I myself being divorced and having three grown amazing sons know that when you become divorced it doesn't just stop Mm -hmm. you have the opportunity if you if you seize it to change the dynamic in your family your family is just a different kind of family Mm -hmm. we're still a family and so if you can learn if you go through a process with me or any divorce coach i would hope through learning what you need to know, you will become empowered, Mm -hmm. informed, educated, confident. And when you have all of those amazing qualities going, especially in an amicable divorce where you do care about what's going to happen to your children and your lives in the future, um, you are able to create something amazing for the future. A lot of people say to me, well, you talk to your ex-husband. I'm like, yeah, I do. They're my son's dad. And we were together a very long time. And this was a very difficult transition for me and my children. They were teenagers Mm -hmm. and um, it was difficult. And I was a dinosaur. I was a stay-at-home mom. He became a CEO and traveled the world. So we had our dynamic, Mm -hmm. we had our roles defined, and then boom, the rug was pulled out and everything changed in that moment. So, um, I think in particular, the dynamic you're talking about is the one I see that needs a divorce coach the most. Right. It's where we have typically a female, but not always, who's stayed at home, who's been financially dependent on somebody else, had a certain future in mind. I get Mm -hmm. to stay at home. I'm going to raise the children. That's our priority. Um, And all of a sudden, the narrative changes. Right. And they are so overwhelmed. They don't even know where to start. They are just you know, and a lot of times put their head in the sand to their right. detriment, you know, and are sort of in reaction mode as opposed to being somebody who's making the choices because they just right. are so adverse to wanting this to occur, to accepting it, to being proactive about it in any way. And so um, that is often what I see where a divorce coach is incredibly helpful because I am not a therapist and I am not a coach. <laughs> And as an attorney, I'm often the most expensive person on the team. So use the right tool for the issue is something we exactly like to know. And that, and that is, you know, uh, at my fingertips, having gone through things, you know, every, every person is different. Every divorce can be different. Families are different, but the positive things that I learned on my road, uh, I read about, I looked back at, um, when I was at my saddest in the process of divorcing, uh, my oldest son said to me, you know, mom, you've been with dad for so long. Like, do you remember who you were before him? Mm. And I like, <laughs> I wiped my <laughs> tears and I said, oh my gosh, like that is so smart. I, I didn't mm-hmm. think of that yeah. because I think of myself as mom, wife, 
volunteer, you know, I think of myself in different ways. I had lost myself. Mm -hmm. So I had to come back to a place and remember, well, who was I? Right. And, and that is not an easy thing for a lot of men or women to do. They put an identity for work or their jobs, careers. They put that as a priority in their lives and there's not a balance. And even as a stay-at-home mom, there was not a balance. Yeah. I wasn't pursuing other things that I loved that made me me. Mm-hmm. So um, just having gone through uh, all of this on my own, the experience along with the education that I sought and worked really hard through, um, I'm very, very happy to be able to give of myself this way. This is a purpose this is fulfilling for me. Yeah. Um, it matters to me. It's not just a job. Mm-hmm. And um, I think that people I've worked with understand that from my level of care and, and compassion and trying to help them. Uh, a lot of women that I've worked with did have their, may have had their head in the sand mm-hmm. thinking, oh, you know, I just won't think about this today. The problem with that is the next day, it's still going to be there. It's not going to go away. Um, if there is a change coming, especially if you are uncomfortable with it, you really do need to sit down and make a list of what you value. What are your standards? That is one of the first exercises I do with everybody because I want to know where they're, how I'm going to come to them to help them best. Who are they? Mm -hmm. Whereas maybe money and prestige of title meant a lot to someone else in my life, it didn't matter to me. Right. I just wanted to raise really good people. <laughs> so, yeah. um, and that's so helpful a lot. to me because as a divorce attorney, I'm always saying, asking my client and sometimes they don't have an answer ready. Right. What are the most important things to you to get out of this process? You know, is it child custody? Is it financial stability? Is it, you want to stay in your home? Is it a piece of personal property? Everybody is very different. And so when I have my client at the onset of the case, give me your priorities because I need to know where to focus my efforts. And they are just like a deer in the headlights and don't know what to say about that. Um, You know, they could already be ready with that information if they've been working with a coach. Yeah. Yeah. Because I do that as part of my, um, the word curriculum is not the correct word, but I'm just going to use that right now. So the protocol of coaching that I use. All coaches are not the same, but I like them to know and touch base with who they were, who they are now. Mm -hmm. What do they like about those things? We put it together. And the, the exercise with values meeting standards is a highly important one. Mm -hmm. When you are going through major life change, um, divorce and death, those two things really bring you to your knees and humble you. And you have to kind of know that I have to remember who I was and what's important to me. So when you say, you know, you have to know about somebody's priorities, absolutely. As their attorney, you need to know that so that Mm -hmm. you can help them. Yeah. I don't want to be focusing on finances if they don't care. And they're so passionate about another topic. I want them to be happy at the end of the day and that I've served their priorities and have given them the best result possible. So if I'm an attorney in a case, and let's just say Jane Doe calls on the phone and says, I'm reaching out um, to hire you for my case. And I am working with um, a divorce coach as an attorney. What can I expect that relationship to be like? between me Um, and the divorce coach. Cause I think that's where we really have a disconnect. I think divorce attorneys think the coaches are stepping on their toes, but tell me what that would look like. Um, actually the truth of it is a good divorce coach does not advise. It goes back to, um, sourcing, helping them prioritize, organize paperwork, meet timely, Uh, demands, you know, for their attorneys, uh, financial guidance and all of that. Um, As a divorce coach, I want to help my client help their attorney Mm -hmm. uh, so that the process is smooth and flows. It doesn't get, you know, 
broken into different branches as we get into the meat of everything that's going to happen. We just keep flowing along easily because that is one way to uh, give them control of their Mm -hmm. emotions and all of that. So the divorce attorney need not worry um, ethically and like in, in divorce coaching to become certified, there's a lot of ethical information and a lot of it has to do with the legal side of things. I would never tell somebody what to do. That is their attorneys Mm -hmm. that need to, to give them advice. Mm -hmm. I guide them and am their champion for making decisions and I help feed them whatever they need to make good decisions. As far as like uh, things to get done, what's important to them and all of that. Yeah. Like we were saying, like the background, but um, I, I know for a fact that had I had a divorce coach when I was going through this process, the whole thing would have been easier. I wouldn't have been so afraid. I would have looked more forward to my future and, and being able to form and reform my family and, and move forward on mm-hmm. my own. Yeah. And um, that just wasn't a thing. And I had a wonderful attorney. Um, and she did answer a lot of my questions and concerns, but like you were saying before, the expenses were mounting and growing because I would speak with her or the paralegal and I would do a lot of crying Mm -hmm. (laughs) and I, I was having trouble focusing and keeping on what is actually happening in Mm -hmm. a divorce versus the emotional part of it. So Tracy, as a lawyer, you are the business side that helps them form mm-hmm. what they need. I am the emotional side that helps them learn how they can be in control of the situation in a positive way. Yeah. So divorce coaches and attorneys should work together and want to mm-hmm. work together because I take a lot of the emotion away from what the attorneys and paralegals deal with. Yeah. And, That's- um, I think there's a, I guess I hear this a lot that a divorce attorney thinks that, for example, let's say we get a settlement offer as an attorney looks great. I endorse this offer. I think that this looks good. The client takes it to their divorce coach. They're going over it. There's this misconception. I think that the coach is going to be like, oh my gosh, you don't need to accept this offer. This is terrible. You need to do these different things. I have not found that to be the case. I mean, that is, um, I think, just a common misconception. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think Um, the attorney wants to be the only one that's trusted. Um, And so I think that they have this misconception of working on a team when really it would really alleviate their burden. Absolutely. Um, There there are clients that can look at something and make an informed decision and Mm -hmm. be not emotional at all. There are other people who, who need me Mm -hmm. to work through that. So, um, you bring that settlement to them and they're afraid because they haven't, they're not in a place where they feel confident about making a decision for themselves. Um, a, a life and divorce coach, that is my goal to help them resolve and get positive results. So, I would say to them, that's awesome. Like, you know, you have this, you have this sitting in front of you. Um, What are you looking forward to? What are you, what feels good? What's comfortable for you? I don't say, oh, I wouldn't do that. Or, Mm -hmm. oh, that's great. You should just do that. Mm -hmm. That's not my place. I'm supposed to get them to a place where they can say, Pam, Mm -hmm. this, this is the offer I received and I'm all good with it, except for this one part. And then, you know, the one part I can ask them questions about to help them be more comfortable, but again, no advising Mm -hmm. that the whole point in coaching is you're helping somebody learn more about themselves so that they can find the answers easily. They can have the flow, Mm -hmm. they can have the life they want and feel confident through everything. And, um, I think so, an example is perhaps you've worked with them on their budget and what that's going to yes. look like. So when they get yeah. that offer, they are able to assess it and say, based on the work that we've done, 
this offer will meet my budget and I can live within this because right. we've done the background work and I feel confident in the numbers that we came up with. And so I can live within this budget. I'm going to accept this offer as an example. Yeah, which would be absolutely great. Um, some people will have a rough time um, wanting <laughs> everything. Yeah. And it, is, and it is my job to say, and as a divorce coach, especially to say, that is not realistic. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you know, what would you like to do yeah. for your career? And let's get you started on that. Mm -hmm. um, because it's not, re it's just, especially an amicable, is mm -hmm. no way is it realistic to think, oh, I'm going to have everything. I want the house and yeah. I'm really angry. And, you know, a lot of the, of the wants that they come up with, they don't really need, mm -hmm. they want it because of anger. So and if they, they want to, work, their life to be exactly the same as right. it has been without an acknowledgement that the divorce is going to change things dramatically. I see that most often with gray divorces yeah. where I'm representing, um, you know, traditionally the female party who hasn't worked in a, you know, traditional um, gendered situation. And they are just, they don't want a thing to change. They don't want the divorce. They shouldn't have to be punished a dollar for these choices. And they're very passionate that I should get all these things to keep my life exactly the same, because this isn't my choice or what I chose for myself and things of that nature and really wrapping their head around this life change that it is changing. We need to accept it. There's not right. a thing. It's not in It's going to happen with or without you, um, you know, mm -hmm. to get them really there, I find to be um, the, probably the most difficult dynamic that I encounter on a regular basis. Yeah. And that, I, you know, in my own divorce, uh, at first through anger, I was like, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. I came to realize over time that that was not to the benefit of anybody. And the longer I, I had my head in the sand or dug my feet in, that was not to the benefit to me or my family. Yeah. That was making things more difficult for us. And it came to a place where I realized I now understand what I need to do. I need to have a list of needs and mm -hmm. wants. Wants are not needs. Yeah. And wants may go by the wayside because that's not for your survival or to help you grow as a person or get back a career or what have you. And um, as a coach, it is within conversations that someone will come to me in a really difficult place, still very sad and everything. Mm -hmm. And after we work through a lot of that, then they want to know, well, what's realistic? Mm -hmm. And so we work through what's realistic for them and what are they comfortable with and back to comfortable and realistic maybe aren't the same thing, mm -hmm. but you, you're going to change as a person. You're going to expand yeah. through this process. Change is not always bad. And then I'll remind people, well, you want everything to stay the same, but you weren't happy. You're yeah. not happy. Mm -hmm. So change may be very good for you. So let's talk about what we can change and you can find fulfillment in a different way and you can build your life how you want it. But I, Tracy, I completely understand that because uh, that is who I was. Yeah. And, all, and I've been divorced now. I gosh, I think it's like, I got, we started in 2007. We, we completed in 2009. Mm -hmm. So yeah. to present day, I have grown so much as a person. Um, much more independent, confident. I finally figured out how to put things together in a career that I've always loved. Yeah. And um, so being in, a, being in a gray divorce situation, um, probably the best thing somebody could do would be to take a look at what is realistic. I can't, he has to be able to pay his rent or yeah. he has to be able to have, you know, his whatever. Mm -hmm. you, and a lot of people come to that place out of anger. So once we diffuse the anger yeah. and we get reality based with some positives thrown in there mm -hmm. about here's what you can change, here's what you could do. Mm -hmm. What would you like to do? What do you want to change? Then 
um, even in gray divorce, those, those people experiencing that um, have a different viewpoint, yeah. which I know is helpful in an amicable divorce, completely helpful. Yeah. And, and, and other divorces as well. Mm -hmm. We see a lot of gray divorce in the amicable divorce process because of the efficiency Mm -hmm. of the process, how much money people can save and people who are in retirement or on the cusp of retirement are really looking at saving those dollars. And another way to really manage your, your finances and your budget for your divorce. Most people don't think of budgeting your divorce, but I always try to um, point that out to people. Um, You know, they really can use those dollars wisely by incorporating a divorce coach. So um, Pam, tell us where, uh, where you work, where can you help people geographically? Well, um, as a certified divorce coach, um, I'm not limited to just any one area. So I live here in Georgia. I am originally from Chicago. Um, I know people in New York, Florida, all over. I am allowed to practice anywhere. I typically, I used to go to my office to meet people and that changed during COVID. Mm -hmm. And I've become even more comfortable, you know, meeting somebody at the nature center Mm -hmm. or, and going for a walk and discussing, um, or remotely. And so I remote in from home, I'm at home today and, uh, I am able to speak to people about life and divorce coaching wherever they come to me from. So with the powers of the internet, you can help people anywhere that they are. So what is the best way for people to reach you? Uh, probably they could go to my website, uh, trainerlifecoaching.com. And there is a button to schedule. I do offer um, a 30 minute consultation because I want to know that I'm a good match for them. Yeah, I don't absolutely. want mm-hmm. that. That's pretty important. So they can schedule right where it says, you know, book a consultation, you push a button, it takes them to a page, that page comes to me through the internet. (laughs) And then, uh, and then it's scheduled. And then Mm -hmm. we can have a phone call, we can do a zoom, um, whichever. And if I I live in uh, just outside of Atlanta. So if somebody is between here and coming, I'm happy to go meet them Mm -hmm. somewhere else too. Because I I do know people in coming. I just want to point out the trainer is T-R-A-Y-N-O-R. And if you're looking to connect with Pamela, her information is also going to be on our show notes. So however you're viewing this or listening to this, it will be there that you can go back and look at the text and reach out to her um, on her website and get in touch if you feel like you've listened to this and you need some divorce coaching. Um, Pamela, thank you so much for being with me today. I think this was incredibly helpful. And I hope that if you're listening, um, that you got a lot out of it. And if you're facing divorce, that you will consider an amicable divorce. Um, thank you very much for tuning in until next time. Thank you.